There are at least three ways to build most EDH decks. Strong! Fun, fun, fun! Fun, fun, fun! <laughs> and mean! Let's look at the strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. And the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. Today we're going to talk about Sakashima of a Thousand Faces and the three ways that I would build this partner commander. But first, if you would, go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. And if there's a commander that you want me to build three ways, leave it in the comments below and you might see it in an upcoming video. Let's look at this commander. Sakashima of a thousand faces, one blue, three other for a 3-1 human rogue. You may have Sakashima enter the battlefield as a copy of another creature you control, except it has Sakashima of a thousand faces other abilities. The legend rule doesn't apply to permanents you control, and it has partner. Doubling your partner commander can be very powerful. You can take advantage of a very strong attacking partner. You can take advantage of strong enter the battlefield abilities, and that sort of influences the three ways that we're going to build Sakashima. The three ways that I would build the a thousand faces are an enters the battlefield tribal for the strong way and partner it with Kodama of the East Tree. For the fun way, I would partner it with the Baron Singir and we would have it companioned with Garuda. Oh yeah, that one's gonna be fun. And for the mean way, we're going to make it all about clones and stealing, theft, everything that we can on the battlefield with Tevish Zat, the commander planeswalker, as the partner for Sakashima. Let's get into the strong way. For the strong way, we're gonna partner it with Kodama of the East Tree, a six cost six six reaching spirit. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana cost from your hand onto the battlefield. So we can place creatures onto the battlefield that have enters the battlefield abilities. We can minimum place lands onto the battlefield whenever another permanent is entering the battlefield. And so we'll get multiple landfall triggers. And those two things in conjunction can be very strong. So we'll start off by just showing some good ETB triggers here. The great thing about Sakashima is that Sakashima can copy either Kodama or into any of our enters the battlefield creatures and get those abilities again. Eternal Witness is going to return any card from the graveyard to our hand. AC is going to have an additional land available on each of our turns to play. And whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. So this is leaning more towards the landfall part. And with Sakashima copying AC or copying Kodama, you're getting multiple landfalls every single turn. You're drawing cards and you're taking advantage of that. Same with Tatiova, very similar abilities on the Benthic Druid as AC the Giant. We've also got Scoot Swarm. I mean, this card has just been everywhere lately, right? People love it. It's an awesome card to copy because it just grows exponentially. This is a mean one for Sakashima to be copying. This is a mean one to be taking advantage of all of your multiple landfall triggers. Scoot Swarm I love in this deck. Agent of Treachery. This is where we go towards the enters the battlefield thing and we take advantage of that. Agent of Treachery is going to steal any permanent if it enters the battlefield and if Sakashima is entering as a copy of Agent of Treachery we're going to get to steal even more stuff. Along those lines a card like Deadeye Navigator is going to let us take advantage of those enter the battlefield abilities by letting them trigger over and over again for just two mana. Deadeye Navigator comes in, soul bonds with another creature, and then each of those creatures has pay two, exile it, then return it to the battlefield under your control. So it not only protects those creatures from single target removal, but it lets us have the enters the battlefield again. Frilled Mystic, when paired with Deadeye Navigator, is absolutely nuts because whenever it's entering the battlefield, you're countering target spell. That's two mana counter spells with the Deadeye Navigator being soul bonded to Frilled Mystic. Sakashima entering the battlefield, becoming a copy of Frilled Mystic. You're letting them counter spells. We're getting multiple triggers off of our ETBs. Conjurer's Closet is sort of the classic example of an artifact that allows us to get multiple copies of our Enter the Battlefield effects over and over again. At the beginning of your end step, you can exile a creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. So it enters the battlefield again, and we get that trigger again. Another card that you might want to think about for a strategy like this is Birthing Pod, because it's going to let you go get specific creatures out of your library. 
take advantage of their enter the battlefield ability if you need it right then, or just go and get more and more powerful creatures by simply sacking a creature that you have on the battlefield. And another card that's going to take advantage of a strategy like this a lot is Mimic Vat. Whenever a non-token creature is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you can exile that card, and if you do, return each other card exile with Mimic Vat to its owner's graveyard, fine. Pay three, tap it, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of the exiled card. It gains haste and then exile it at the end step. So you get the ETB. There's a lot of creatures, Frilled Mystic comes to mind, that if you can get them onto a Mimic Vat, you've got a mean little cannon there that can have an enter the battlefield going off whenever you want it. Paired with Kodama of the East Tree, we've got a nice enters the battlefield strategy going. We've got a nice landfall strategy going. And I think that's a very strong way to build this deck. Let's look at the fun way to build it. And I would say that's Garuda Companion with Baron Singir. I already made one video about the companions that pair well with the partner commanders so that you effectively have a 10 card opening hand. Make sure you go check that video out because we do talk about Sakashima and Garuda in that video. But I really wanted to dive deeper into that build and show off more of the strategies that you could take advantage of in that deck. Garuda, Doom of the Depths, 6 mana, 6-6. Six, six. Your starting deck can only contain cards with even CMCs. So if I did this right, by the time we're to the bottom of this list and we've talked about the fun way to build, we're only going to have seen cards that have an even CMC. When it enters the battlefield, each player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, put a creature card with an even mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under your control for free. Sakashima copying this is going to give us those triggers again. We're going to be able to really mill some people, pull some stuff out of graveyards, combine it with a reanimator strategy. A good partner for that would be Baron Singir. The Dark Baron, the partner version of Sengir. Six mana, four, four. Flyer, whenever another creature dies, put two plus one plus one counters on Sengir. Whenever another player loses the game, you gain life equal to that player's life total as the turn began. The reason I like this as the partner for Sakashima in this build is it sort of gives you another strategy to win. It gives you another win con. This commander can go over the top so quickly and out of nowhere and one shot an opponent and you gain all that life back. It's a little different from our Garuda Sakashima strategy, but that can be very powerful. Plus, it gives access to black mana in our color pairings. So, with Garuda and Sakashima, let's say we've got Sakashima and Garuda on the battlefield already. Let's play Illusionist Stratagem. Four mana, exile up to two target creatures you control, then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. We get the triggers again, and Illusionist Stratagem draws a card, so it replaces itself. Mind crank. Now, we're going to be milling everybody with Garuda and then looking in their graveyard for creatures that we want to return to the battlefield. So if Minecrank is on the field and we are milling everybody at the same time, whenever an opponent loses life, that player puts that many cards from the top of his or her library into his or her graveyard, we're going to have more choices. Dreamborn Muse does the same thing. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player puts the top X cards of their library into their graveyard where X is the number of cards in their hand. We're just going to be giving ourselves more options, filling up our opponent's graveyards and ours so that hopefully we can get a excellent Garuda into the battlefield, or we can use cards to return those creatures from the graveyard or their graveyards to our battlefield and take advantage of these cards that we've put there. If we're going to be returning creatures from the graveyard to the battlefield, let's have some creatures that could go in there from our mind crank abilities or from our dreamborn muse, or even from our Garuda putting it there. Like Noxious Gearhulk, a 5-4 Minister, when it enters the battlefield, destroy another target creature. Yeah, that's exactly what we want to be running. Rexiel the Risen Deep, it's got Island Walk, Swamp Walk, 5-8. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you can cast an instant or sorcery from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. That card gets exiled, but that's fine. We are going to get more value off of dumping cards into everybody's graveyard. You want to run reanimator effects. You want to run creatures in your graveyard that can also be good reanimator animator targets so that you hopefully are at least hitting something. Now, we can also take advantage, like Rexiel, of those non-creatures even further. Memory Plunder, you may cast an instant or sorcery from an opponent's graveyard without paying its mana cost. There's a lot of effects like this, and I would encourage you to find those effects for this build, because we're going to be putting cards into the graveyard, so we might as well take advantage of them and use everyone's graveyards as essentially another hand. Now, if you're going to be milling yourself and you lean really hard into that way, I would say run Jace Wielder as well. That 
passive is all we really care about. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. So this can be a little backup win condition or just backup safety for if it goes long and you know the whole deck is just milled out and you need some way to win, Jace Wielder of Mysteries is gonna help you get there. I really like this build and this is personally probably the first way I'm going to try the Sakashima deck because I love having Sakashima, another partner, and Garuda as a companion. Like I said, go check out our other video, 10 cards in your opening hand, where I went over some good partner combinations and companion combinations so that you've got three commanders or 10 cards in your opening hand or however you want to look at it. That's the fun way. Let's look at the mean way and let's build it with Tevish Zat and steal everyone's stuff. Tevish Zat, Doom of Fools, is one of the most high power partners, I think, that we saw out of Commander Legends. Five mana, four loyalty, plus two, create two zero ones. Plus one, you can sacrifice another creature, a Planeswalker. If you do draw two, then draw another card. If the sacrifice permanent was a commander, and the minus 10, gain control of all commanders, put all commanders from the command zone onto the battlefield under your control. This card is ridiculous. It sacrifices stuff, it steals stuff, and that's where we want to lean this ability. Sakashima is not going to be able to copy Tevish because Sakashima only copies creatures, but there are some cards that we can run that will copy Tevish, and if we're stealing everyone's creatures, making copies of their creatures, we're sacrificing the commanders that we're stealing with some of the effects that I'm going to show show you we're going to have a good time with Tevish on the battlefield giving us a ton of card advantage from essentially killing their commander after we take it swing a few times we'll sack it draw some cards here you you can have it back now that's fine stunt double I like because it has flash four mana enters the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield which is nice because you don't have to personally have a creature on your side of the battlefield like some of these other cards may require I like stunt double a lot spark double is what I was talking about here we can copy Tevish Zat for four mana, enters as a copy of a creature or a planeswalker with an additional plus one plus one counter or an additional loyalty counter on it, and it's not legendary if that permanent is legendary, so we don't have to sacrifice one or the other. We can essentially have two Tevish Zats on the battlefield. We'll run Sakashima's signature spell for this deck. One blue, three other, choose one sorcery. If you control a commander as you cast this, you get to choose both. Target opponent chooses a creature they control, you gain control of it. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to be doing with this build. Choose a creature you control, each other creature you control, because it becomes a copy of that creature until end of turn. So we get even more of what we want to do with this deck. We want to copy and we want to steal. Speaking of stealing, we can steal creatures. Control magic. Two blue, two other. You control enchanted creature we can steal creatures this way too five mana when it comes into play you get to untap five lands and we control enchanted creature here's another way except we add planeswalkers into the fun here six mana three five flying death touch dragon whenever it enters the battlefield gain control of target creature or planeswalker for as long as you control silumgar we can steal permanents confiscate you control enchanted permanent for six mana we can steal anything they've got for each opponent gain control of target permanent that player controls we can also steal things out of their library steal artifacts with acquire search target opponent's library for an artifact card and put that card on into play under your control then that player shuffles their library. We can also steal something while it's still on the stack. Gain control of target spell. You may choose new targets, and if it's a permanent, it enters the battlefield under your control. We can also steal mana. Let's counter spells, and at the beginning of our next mana phase, at main phase, excuse me, add mana to your mana pool equal to that spell's converted mana cost. We can steal stuff from the top of their library. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of target opponent's library, exile one of them face down. Down, then put the rest on the bottom you may look at and cast that card for as long as it remains exiled and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast that spell we can also steal their card draws we can steal so much with this deck if an opponent would draw a card except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps instead you create a treasure token sorry about it you don't get your card draws we get treasure tokens instead and of course we can steal their library searches you control your opponents while they're searching their libraries and essentially you get to find whatever they were allowed to find with their search spell and you get to use it instead so if we're stealing commanders we can attack with those commanders and then we can sacrifice them with tevish to draw more cards 
or we can use all of this theft and control and copy to protect Tevish so we can get to that ultimate, steal everybody's commander from wherever it is, and hopefully, probably win the game with that ultimate. That's the strong fun and mean ways that I would build Sakashima of a thousand faces. Let's close the book. Thank you so much for watching, really appreciate it. Sakashima is probably one of the coolest partner commanders that came out of Commander Legends, and I was really excited to make this video. I'm also really excited to build this deck and get some games in. I stream Commander gameplay on MTGO once or twice a week, so make sure you hit that notification bell down there so you know when we go live, or look out for any of our videos that have the little live symbol on the thumbnail. That's how you know it's a replay of a stream that we had. On your way out, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and go check out some of our other three ways to build Commander commander videos. And if you want me to build a commander three ways, like I said, leave it in the comments and you might see it in a video. Other than that, I'm tapped out and I'll catch you later.